we have another super exciting discovery coming out of James Webb Space Telescope. And this time it's actually a kind of a double discovery. First, what seems to be a completely new type of stars that we don't really understand at all, but that the scientists behind the study decided to name after the Japanese kaiju monsters. Specifically, we have Godzilla and Mothra. Mostly because these stars seem to be extremely large and extremely bright. But the second, and I guess more important discovery, is not something that we see here, but instead is something we don't see, but that seems to be responsible for the effects we're observing. Here we're talking about... Okay, take a second, take a wild guess. What do you think it is? That's right. The mysterious dark matter. But more specifically, we're actually discussing a physical observation that it seems to be there, and there's absolutely no better way to explain this other than potentially some kind of a invisible particle. With this new observation being an almost irrefutable evidence for the existence of dark matter once again. And so let's discuss these new discoveries and of course talk about how all of this was found as well. And so let's start with these stars. Now honestly, it will be very difficult to help you visualize exactly where all of this is located. Imagine this is the Milky Way. Now imagine traveling away from the Milky Way for a very, very, very long time. The distances here are extremely far. This is at a redshift of over 2, or basically the light took approximately 11 billion years to reach us. We'll actually be flying here for quite a while. And that's where those stars were discovered, at least one of them. This recent star, Mothra as it's now known, is seen to us as it was over 10 billion years ago, with the previous discovery, Godzilla, even being slightly farther away but in a different galaxy. And what's of course very unusual here is the fact that we can see these as individual stars at these ridiculous distances. Something that's only possible because of relatively powerful gravitational lensing effects. And all of this is produced by a powerful galactic cluster known as Max 0416, a galactic cluster that was actually explored by Hubble back in 2014 with images taken over several years. And here, if you zoom in, you can definitely see a lot of lensing and quite a lot of different galaxies distorted by these gravitational lensing effects. But then additional images from the James Webb, released relatively recently, revealed additional data that allowed the researchers behind the study to identify this really unusual star. And so essentially by combining the results, they were able to see the star and were able to discover its properties. Discovering that it's probably some kind of a binary system with two really bright stars, one as luminous as 50,000 suns, and one with a luminosity of 125,000 suns. But intriguingly, not really that hot. The smaller star is only about 5,000 Kelvin, or very similar to our sun. The bigger star is only about 14,000 Kelvin. Which basically suggests that these are very different stars from what we expect them to be. One is very sun-like, but extremely bright. One is a little bit more blue, but is approximately three times as bright. But the only way to explain why they're so bright is really through sheer size. These stars are very likely extremely large, very likely much larger than any supergiant we have in the Milky Way. So think Betelgeuse, but maybe several times larger. In contrast, the previously discovered Godzilla star from 2022 is believed to be even brighter. But in this case, it's probably a result of a major eruption similar to what happened around Eta Carina. This is something that happened in the 1800s and it basically turned the star something like 50 million times brighter than the sun. And that's probably what's happening here as well. So this is why Godzilla is so bright, which implies that it's eventually going to decrease in luminosity and potentially disappear, becoming invisible. But in the case of the binary, they actually generally seem to be very, very bright, very large stars, whose properties suggest that they are very different from anything in the Milky Way. Also, just as a quick side note, these are not the farthest stars we've ever seen. That record goes to Arendelle, we've discussed on the channel previously, with the video in the description, but this star is at a redshift of over 6, way, way farther than Godzilla and Mothra. Although the more official name for these stars is EMO, Extremely Magnified Object. And so at the moment we have three such objects discovered in the last two years. But for Arendelle and Godzilla, there are some other explanations. For this binary though, it's actually unclear why we're able to see it. Specifically, it seems to have been visible for at least 8 years. And so this is not a result of an unusual accidental micro lens passing in front of a star. For example, Gaia Telescope observed quite a lot of micro lensing effects 
between 2014 and 2018 allowing us to reveal various really massive objects passing in front of stars. But this usually doesn't last very long and disappears after just a few months. And that's of course because the object in front of the star usually moves pretty quickly, with the lens eventually disappearing. But this unusual lens remained here for at least 8 years. And trying to explain this type of magnification by using the lensing from just the galactic cluster is just not enough. If we look at the entire mass of this cluster and try to use it to explain the detection of the star, it just doesn't really make sense. And it doesn't make sense by a huge factor. And so the fact that this star is visible implies the presence of a much much smaller gravitational lens independent of the galactic cluster. And the best explanation that makes sense and scientists provide in a paper involves some kind of an invisible mass of at least 10,000 solar masses. Here it's referred to as a millilens. Now this could be some kind of a black hole obviously, but the more likely explanation based on the observations and the simulations basically comes from various dark matter models. It seems to be a chunk of dark matter that seems to create a larger structure that's entirely invisible in optical light, or even infrared light. I mean, for all we know, this could also be some kind of a dark matter star. You can learn more about this concept in one of the videos in the description. And so through simulations of mass distribution based on magnification, the researchers in this paper established that it's most likely a blob of dark matter that seems to be located right between the star and us. And although in the past there have been discoveries of galaxies mostly containing dark matter and practically emitting no light, there's a few videos in the description describing this in more detail, the implication here is that we actually found a small chunk of dark matter that's always been part of the prediction for various dark matter models. And more intriguingly, these observations now kind of establish the approximate mass for this potential dark matter particle. Although unfortunately, it's extremely low in mass, so it would be very very difficult to physically discover. Which is of course maybe one of the reasons we haven't found anything yet. And so this study sets a really important constraint on what exactly dark matter might be, assuming that all these observations are confirmed and are correct. And so in essence, these unusual observations of a really bright star super far away might be one of the best proofs we have for dark matter and might finally help scientists to identify exactly what it's made out of. Not to mention that it also uncovers an unusual type of a star we've never seen before. Super large and super bright. But not very hot. And in case you're wondering, these gravitational lensing effects create a magnification of approximately 4000 times. Which can only be done if there was a huge amount of mass present between planet Earth and that particular star. Or I guess two stars. Because it is a binary after all. Although here it's not entirely clear how big the dark matter chunk actually is. It could be as massive as 2 million solar masses resembling a small galaxy. And it wouldn't be the first dark matter galaxy we've ever seen. And so by itself this is a pretty intriguing discovery. Several mysteries all in one study. And they're named after Kaiju. Which means that we'll have more monsters describing other stars once they're discovered. But until these future discoveries, that's I guess for now all we know. An unusual star system super far away a potentially direct proof of dark matter allowing us to find out exactly what it is and of course a mysterious type of stars we're going to be seeing more in future studies. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.